Hit a motherfucker in the face over and over and over and over again until they quit. And when they quit, hit them again and again and again and again. Well, good Taco Tuesday, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Taco Tuesday. Um, today was a sad and joyful day at the same time um i've just gotten back from the memorial service for our buddy rashid and hearing some of the stories about rashid that i didn't know i only knew rashid really since 2018 uh when we went down to the draft and so on but learning more and more about him was actually a beautiful huh you met him at the washington game Okay, well, I don't remember that, but all right. It, 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 well, somewhere around 2018. But I wanted to talk about, now, we, it, today is the day off. Tomorrow, the Dallas Cowboys get back out on the field in practice. Not not the game, not the game that we love. we talking about practice, and I can't wait to see my team back on the field, okay? Um, the Buffalo Bills, um, which have been an up-and-down team, We've been watching the weather forecast, and right now they're looking for at 46 degrees in Buffalo. You know, this is where the opposite of hell freezing over, it's more like the North Pole and thawed out. And if that holds, that definitely has to help the Dallas Cowboys that are a two and a half point underdog with the um, Buffalo Bills literally holding on to their playoff lives. They've got a lot to play for, as well as we do, too. And this is an opportunity for Dak Prescott to continue making his case and killing the haters out there for league MVP. One of the things that you have to realize, okay, now, you know, people know that I am a huge Dak Prescott fan. I have been one since I first saw him in 2016 at the Senior Bowl and have been that guy that was at the draft saying, draft Dak, draft Dak, not trade Dak, draft Dak. And even when he was the four-string quarterback getting one pass in uh, the OTAs, sending messages to Mike Fisher asking how Dak Prescott was looking and he was all he's late on his reads and stuff you know and literally my son back here Michael I remember going to Mike Mosh and saying I want a Dak Prescott jersey he's like dude what you mean the four string quarterback I said, yeah, I want, I want a Dak Prescott jersey for my son. He's like, I mean, you don't want that. I, how about, you know, I get you a Jason Witten jersey or, you know, some, or Des Bryant. I said, no. I said, I want a Dak Prescott because at that time, there weren't any pre-made Dak Prescott jerseys. There weren't. He had to custom make it. My son still has that jersey. You got it autographed, didn't you? Yeah, it's autographed. Oh, oh. That's one of the, probably one of the first ones that he's had but understand this as Dak Prescott is lurching towards MVP the thing about being MVP is it's an individual award but without a team effort you can't win it you don't see guys having great seasons on losing teams that are MVPs you don't see great quarterbacks that are having people that are dropping the balls and not getting the end zone MVPs you need the guys on the other side of the field I mean on your side of the field catching the ball you need the running back being able to run the football you need the offensive line to block and keep you upright so you can make those incredible throws it is a team effort now the funny thing right now that I think about is the things that the talking heads condemn the Cowboys for doing and saying that they didn't care and mistakes that they made. For example, Kellen Moore. Oh my God, the Dallas Cowboys offense with Dak Prescott and Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator was the highest scoring one when Dak Prescott was healthy. How you get rid of that, that offensive coordinator? Well, guess what? One of the arguments they say about quarterbacks a franchise quarterback elevates the people around them well looking at kellen moore who left from the dallas cowboys with dak prescott 
going to the Chargers with what was deemed a generational talented quarterback where people literally said now Kellen Moore has a real quarterback to work with somehow that offense has digressed digressed and Justin Herbert was ass ass and probably is happy that he fractured his finger so he doesn't have to play and maybe Kellen Moore gets run out of town clearly Dak Prescott elevated that guy Another one of those things they said was the Cowboys screwed the pooch by letting Dalton Schultz go. Well, here's the thing. Here's what's funny. Right now, as we sit here today, as we watch the evolution of our offense, one of the things that people don't talk about that is actually a lot bigger than what you realize is, is Jake Ferguson. For years, I pointed out over and over again, because you can look at the New England's 2010 and 11 and all that when they had Aaron Hernandez and they had, of course, the Gronk. And you can look throughout Tom Brady's career. He's always had a great tight end. You can look at the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl. They had Dallas Goddard and... um, uh, dude that's looking for a job right now who says he doesn't want to be a cowboy. I bet you the cowboy said, we'll, we'll, we'll bring you on right now. I bet you would want to. Uh, what's his name? Man, I can't remember. I, you know what? I don't want to think about any damn Eagles, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, but you think about George Kittle, you know, with, with the San Francisco 49ers being that security blanket. You think about Travis Kelsey, okay? You think about the teams that are great. They have a great tight end, and we haven't had a great tight end since Jason Gar- excuse me, Jason Witten's younger years. I'm sure somebody would go out there and make a video and say, look, he's calling Jason Garrett a tight end. Go ahead, dude. Get a freaking life, man. Wow. I can't make a Freudian slip or I can't make a mistake. Wow. Okay. But be that as it may, here's the thing that's interesting. Here's the thing that's interesting. Dalton Schultz currently sits as far as tight ends go in yardage at 570 yards and five TDs. That is eighth in the NFL. Eighth. Wait a minute. Didn't know that, did you? That's better than like Dallas Goddard. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, Dallas Goddard's missed a bunch of games because he had a broken arm, which is true because he's got about 150 yards more than Dallas Goddard. But here's the thing that's interesting is if you look at yards per game, you literally have the same number of yards per game as Dallas Goddard. But what's amazing is he's got five TDs. Dallas Goddard's only got two. And as you think of guys like Dalton Schultz, well, Dalton Schultz, he's got like 125 yards more than Dalton Schultz. Huh. And you have to look at this as the Cowboys offense didn't really wake up until after the San Francisco. We, we First of all, the first couple of games between the Jets and the Giants, the defense did a lot of the heavy lifting and the scoring. Special teams, scoring touchdowns. And the offense really was, meh. Dak Prescott, six TDs, four interceptions. You saw Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot both drop t- uh, touchdown passes against the Giants the first week. Uh, Jake Ferguson didn't start coming on until after the bye week. But you've seen him now hurling people hurdling people not once but twice this season and you see him now becoming that guy as a tight end which is huge because the more weapons you have and no disrespect to san francisco fans and brock purdy you know because brock purdy is put up on the pedestal and they talk about how great brock purdy is but when you get a guy like debo samuels that literally has a five yard five yard cushion on a deep pass it's a little easier than when you're throwing into tight windows it's a little easier when your guys are making yards after catch on screen plays that are going to the house it's a little easier when you have the you know one of the best offensive lines in football including the best left tackle it's a little easier when you have the best running back in football i'm not saying that because it just thinking that you have all these pieces that i can go out there and be the quarterback is ridiculous not saying that 
but there's clearly a big difference of how you play when you have your weapons. It's, it's revisionist history now. When you look at somebody like Jalen Hurts, who last year had all of those things going right for him, okay, great running attack, best offensive line of football, you know, great wide receivers, Dallas Goddard didn't miss any time or anything like that. It was easier on him to be elite. But take a look at last night, Tua without Tariq Hill or Tariq Hill hurt. They're 8 0 with Tariq Hill. And I think one and four without Tariq Hill. With them, without them. With them, without them. And this is where the Cowboys have not had that guy. Now, I know Dalton Schultz had a lot of yards. He had 800 and some yards, I think, um, two years ago. But you look at Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz, he ain't making no yards after catch. Dalton Schultz has some drops here. You're not seeing those things with Jake Ferguson, who's only in his second year. And to put this even more in perspective, let me throw a dig at my man DMV, who literally said, get Kyle Pitts. Jake Ferguson got more yards than Kyle Pitts. He's got more yards than Mark Andrews. More than Dallas Goddard. More than Darren Waller. More than Dalton Schultz. So, yes, we have definitely found something. And see, this is the difference between the Cowboys and the Eagles. The Cowboys, we kill them for not doing enough in free agency, although they made the two trades for Stefan and Brandon Cooks, which seem to have paid dividend thus far. But the Cowboys have not gone out and done that damage in free agency because they have been able to find players in the draft and undrafted rookie free agents. That's the thing. You get a Peyton Hendershot who's an undrafted rookie free agent. You get a Terrence Steele who's an undrafted rookie free agent. You find a quarterback in the fourth round like Dak Prescott. And as much as we're killing this year's draft class, Look back at last year's draft class and how much they played last year versus this year. Part of this is the Cowboys, per se, haven't necessarily needed that immediate punch from the rookie class. The major holes, because you've had a Hankins, it's enabled you to use a Mozzie Smith as depth and a guy who can learn and watch that come next year you have a different perspective. So, there you have it. The Dallas Cowboys' secret weapon. Dalton Schultz. Oh, did I say, oh my God. Jake Ferguson. Jeez, go ahead and kill me. Jake Ferguson. All right, I'm just curious. How are you Eagle fans right now after the Dallas Cowboys? Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart?